Satan wants you to live with a guilty conscience. He wants you to feel guilty all the time. He wants you to feel condemned. He wants you to feel like God's against you. He wants you to feel accused, to feel self-conscious, which is the feeling of being observed without being approved. And Satan doesn't even use his voice anymore because you've gotten used to yourself telling you these things. You're not enough. You never do enough. You'll never have enough. You don't say the right things. You don't measure up. You don't get it all done. You don't do enough for your children. You don't do enough for your parents. You don't do enough for others. You don't do as much as others do. You always seem to to blow it. You always seem to fail. You always say things you regret. You get angry so easily. You think bad thoughts. You don't have the right clothes. You eat too much. You don't exercise. You don't pray enough. You don't read enough. You don't fast enough. You don't you're not Christian enough. You're not holy enough. You're not godly enough. These are the accusations of the devil. And we have heard them in first person. In other words, our mind has trained us to think these things about ourselves. And we need to say enough is enough. I'm not going to accuse myself anymore. I'm not going to condemn myself anymore. What should we say to these accusations that tell us you're not enough, you don't do enough, you're not holy enough, you're not godly enough. We have to attack the accusing thoughts, the the thoughts that are accusing us. This is what's robbing us of the enjoyment of our of our salvation. The enjoyment of our Christianity is being ripped out right from underneath us because we're listening to condemning thoughts about ourselves or about others. So what should we say to these condemning thoughts? Romans chapter eight, verse one says there is therefore now no condemnation. For those who are in Christ, there is now there is therefore now right this moment, there is no condemnation. If you're born again, you're in Christ. And if you're in Christ, the devil can't condemn you. And if the devil can't condemn you, then you shouldn't condemn you. And if the devil can't condemn you and the devil can't condemn her or the devil can't condemn condemn him, then you shouldn't condemn him and you shouldn't condemn her because the de- God doesn't even condemn them. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ without Christ. Everybody's under condemnation. But so many Christians are they're born again. They're in Christ. They've been given this freedom but they're not experiencing it because their conscience is condemning them. Always reminding you of something you've done wrong, always reminding you of where you've fallen short, always reminding you of something you failed at, always nagging you. This is over today. I declare war on the spirit of accusation against you. What shall we say to these things? There is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ. What shall we say to these things? If God is for me, who can be against me? What shall we say to these things? He that did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? What shall we say to these things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? What shall we say to these things? God is the one who justifies. I will not be condemned another day in my life. That's what we must say to these thoughts. 